If English speaking people have one thing in common, it's that we love butter. From England to America and Ireland to Scotland, butter is beloved. So it's no surprise that popular expressions or idioms based on butter exist in English. Have you ever heard one about cream cheese? I think not. Let's talk about bread and butter or earning your bread and butter. Your bread and butter is your main or only source of income. It's how you pay your rent and basic bills. It's your primary occupation or the main aspects of that job. There was also a time when to butter your bread meant to secure a decent living. Sometimes as well we use the expression bread and butter to mean a dull, tedious and unrewarding job. A factory worker on an assembly line might say it's bread and butter work. The main product that your company makes, the one that earns most of the profits, is your bread and butter product. It may also refer to common or everyday things. The expression even found its way into boxing to describe a boxer's main punch or combo. For example, his bread and butter punch is the right hook. Bread and butter similarly can be used to describe the main and most important components of anything. Don't quarrel with your bread and butter means don't give up the way you earn your living. What we call today a thank you note might once have been called a bread and butter letter, which is a letter written to thank someone for their hospitality. This usage occurred in America around the end of the 1800s. Of course, bread and butter go together and we know that bread is one of the most important foods in all of history. Bread has thus found its way into countless expressions and superstitions. In fact, bread and butter was once considered a charm to bring good luck. Once bread has been buttered, the two cannot be separated. This inseparable nature led to the superstition. Saying bread and butter was thought to protect friendships or more specifically to keep friends from being separated. This may seem strange, but the idea of something coming between two friends was an always figurative. No, it was once thought that something physically getting between two friends was bad luck and would separate the friends, thus ending the friendship. You should therefore, for example, avoid letting a dog walk between you and your friend. But if it should happen, say bread and butter to prevent the friendship from ending. The charm also protects against general quarrels among friends. When it comes to friends and many things in life, you have to know which side your bread is buttered on. The buttered side of the bread is the good side. We only butter bread on one side, so one side is always better than the other. To know what side your bread is buttered on then means to know what is good for you. If you bite the hand that feeds you, then you do not know what side your bread is buttered on. If you are rude to people who can help you advance, then likewise, you do not know which side your bread is buttered on. This means that we can have our cake and eat it too, which leads us to a related expression. If you want your bread buttered on both sides, you want more than a person should reasonably expect to have. So, if you butter your bread on both sides, you are burning the candle at both ends and may be doing too much and living too fast, etc. At the same time, the expression might refer to someone who lives in opulent surroundings or who has a lot of wealth. He has his bread buttered on both sides might be said of someone who lives in a palace filled with servants, marble, and expensive furniture. If a person has their bread buttered on both sides, you might want to butter them up to gain their favor and hopefully some kind of advantage. To butter someone up is to flatter them excessively. When you are a real kiss up, you might lay it on thick. Buttering someone up always has the connotation of being insincere and done solely in the hopes of getting what you want. When you want to land a big contract, you might have to butter them up to get them to agree. A related Yiddish expression is to schmear, which means to flatter or to bribe. There's that cream cheese again. 
Usually, a brown noser who butters up important people will appear as if butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. This is an old and rarely heard idiom which refers to someone who looks innocent and as if they would never do anything wrong. Butter usually melts in your hand, let alone your mouth. So a person like this always appears calm and in control, and perhaps self-satisfied, like the cat that ate the canary. This person might look quite gentle and innocent, but looks are deceiving. If you have watched the TV show Cold Justice, you've seen people in interrogations about whom we might say butter wouldn't melt in their mouth. Of course, we usually don't put butter in our mouths without first putting it on something else. After all, butter to butter is no relish. This means exactly what it seems to mean. Butter is something we use to elevate something more basic and substantial. We don't put butter on butter. This very old and, as far as I know, extinct butter expression seems to have been used to refer to two women dancing together or kissing each other. Bread to bread was used in the same way. The last butter expression is something you don't want to be, a butterfingers. To call someone butterfingers means they often drop things they are holding or carrying as if their fingers are greasy and objects just slip right out of their hands. We often think of this as a modern expression, but it has actually been around since the 1800s where it was first exclusive to cricket and then baseball, at least as far as we know. Charles Dickens used the term butterfingers to describe a clumsy cricket player in the Pickwick Papers in 1837. Do you know of any other butter expressions I didn't cover in this video? Let me know in the comments.